Hey guys, it's Stephanie, and in today's video, we are talking about do's and don'ts for purchasing your first horse. Do have an experienced horse person or professional help you in the shopping process. The different services that I've seen offered are things like people doing video reviews of a horse that you have gone to go see and taken videos of, or maybe it's the seller's video that they've posted online. There are people who will do one-on-one -on -one consultations with you and you can ask questions and get some feedback on what kind of horse you should be shopping for and they may be able to point you in the direction of certain ads or certain sellers. There are professionals who will actually go shop with you and I think if you can afford to do this, this is a fantastic option because then you're really getting the most input of what that professional is seeing and experiencing when they're riding the horse and when they see, see you with that horse. Um, there are also professionals who will actually go out and shop on your behalf. So they will go to auctions, they will contact professional uh, trainers and other uh, sellers of horses and find a horse that they think is going to be the right fit for you. Do have some understanding of basic horse body language. At the very least, you want to be able disti to distinguish between a nervous horse and a calm horse. Uh, pay attention to their eyes, pay attention to their posture and their head carriage, both on the ground and under saddle. Again, having an experienced horse person with you will help you pick up on body language things that you might miss as a beginner. You also want to have some idea of what a drugged horse looks like. Now this isn't super common, but it does happen that some sellers will drug a horse prior to a prospective buyer checking them out. The most common drug that I know of that people use to drug horses is called acepromazine, and it is given about 45 minutes to an hour prior to that horse needing to be calm. Um, and so do some research on that just so that you can cover your bases that way as well. Definitely get the vet check. The vet check will assess the overall health and soundness of the horse. They will do something called a flexion test most likely, which is another way of assessing soundness. Blood work is a possibility, although that's not as common. I would spring for x-rays. X-rays are an additional cost over the basic health exam, but I definitely think they are worth it to get x-rays of all four feet because it will give you a heads up for potential soundness issues down the line or just health problems with the feet that you can't see from the outside. I also prefer to choose a vet that is different from the vet that services the seller just so that there's no potential conflict of interest. On that note, I would also be asking the seller if they are open to sharing the horse's vet records. Usually the way this works is that the seller will call their, their vet and release records to me and I will call the vet and they will email me the records. This will help me confirm what the seller has said the horse's health history is because I'll be able to see it in the vet's notes and it'll also give me an idea of how that horse's health has been maintained over the years. Have their teeth been done on a regular basis? Have they gotten their shots on a regular base basis? Have there been any incidental issues or colic that has come up in the time that the seller has had the horse? Do educate yourself on common health issues, especially any health issues specific to the breed of horse that you're looking at. With draft horses, things that I've seen are things like PSSM1, uh, CPL, which is chronic progressive lymphedema. It's an issue that affects the legs. Arthritis, laminitis, founder, feather mites. Again, these things aren't necessarily specific to breed, uh, but it's a good idea to have some idea of what they are in case they do come up. I would also get a basic understanding of some different types of colic as well. I would also encourage you to show up early for your horse appointment so that you can hopefully get a chance to see the horse before the seller pulls them out and gets them all ready and perfect for you. Um, I had a very experienced horse person tell, tell me that she likes to do this because she wants to catch and see if they're going to drug the horse. Um, although she's probably showing up very early in that instance. I would actually ask the seller to leave the horse uncaught because for me a big part of evaluating a horse is seeing you know, if that horse is out in pasture, how easy is it to catch that horse? If that horse is in a paddock or a stall, you know, do they halter easily? What are they like when you lead them away from the barn to go get them tacked up? All that kind of stuff is helpful information and if you show up a little bit earlier, you have a better chance of being able to see some of those things. And along those lines, I would be paying attention to details. I would be paying attention to, you know, does this horse stand to be tacked up? Uh, how easy is it to pick up and pick out all of their feet? Uh, what kind of tack is the seller using? Uh, what kind of bit is the seller using? I would be asking questions along the way, like why did they choose this type of equipment? Does this horse work better with some equipment than others? Stuff like that. Do try the horse out in multiple situations. I would ride that horse in the arena. I would ride that horse out on trail if I'm planning to purchase a trail horse. 
And if I have the opportunity to interact with that horse over the course of multiple days, I definitely would. When I went to go purchase Fame, I flew out to Oklahoma to meet him, and I actually planned to stay for two or three days, just so that provided things went well, I would have the opportunity to ride him on more than one occasion to get a better feel for his personality and our suitability. Some sellers will offer a trial lease, which if you have the opportunity to do that, I think that's a fantastic option. It'll give you a chance to really spend time getting to know the horse, to ride the horse, before you make the final commitment to purchase the horse. I would also be asking for references. So if I am dealing with a professional trainer or a horse broker, this becomes even more important. Any solid professional should be happy to do this for you. There are some horse professionals that are considered more like brokers or horse flippers. They're basically people who procure horses and then turn them around to their final homes relatively quickly. And then there are some horse trainers that are very selective with the horses that they bring into their program and they maybe only train a handful of horses over the course of a year and they spend a lot of time with each individual horse and improve those horses' skills and abilities while that horse is with them and then sell them for a higher asking price. All right, now let's talk don'ts. Don't buy sight unseen. There are just too many factors that go into finding a horse that's a good fit for you. You definitely want to be present to meet and get to know that horse. There are also a lot of people who do scams on people who buy horses sight unseen. I have talked to people who are very established in the horse industry that have gotten screwed this way. Uh, there are also people who will steal pictures off of the internet and list a horse for sale that they don't even have. This actually happened to me with my Instagram account. Someone stole one of Fame's pictures and listed him for sale. Can you believe that? I also would not believe anything that a seller tells you unless you see it for yourself. Now that doesn't mean that you're a harsh or skeptical to the seller's face, but as you're shopping for horses, if the seller says that this horse can do X, Y, and Z, then you definitely want to see them demonstrate that that horse can do X, Y, and Z. Otherwise, I think it's safe to assume that that horse doesn't know how to do it unless you've actually seen it. I also personally would not bother with a seller that won't produce photos and video of the horse that I'm looking at. I would say most sale ads these days already have at least photos, if not video. But if this horse is out of state and you're planning to fly to go check this horse out, you definitely want to get as much data as possible prior to investing all that time and money. And so I would be asking in particular for photos of the horse's feet, front and back, of the horse standing square from the side. I wanna, would want to see video of that horse at a walk, trot, and canter in both directions. Um, if that horse has special skills, especially on trail, a lot of sellers will create a, a sales video around that kind of stuff anyway, but that's always good stuff to see also. Uh, but basically making sure that the seller is willing to produce some proof of the horse doing the things that they say that that horse can do is super helpful in taking that next step. Don't get on a horse unless that seller has already gotten on that horse first and demonstrated everything that that horse can do at all the different gates. This allows you to make sure that you're not getting on a horse that even the seller isn't comfortable riding. Now hopefully this goes without saying, but you don't want to lie about your experience with horses, about your riding abilities, about your intentions for a particular horse or the available time that you have to work with that horse or the living situation that you plan to offer that horse. Don't assume that the seller will reveal everything that you want to know. Uh, this isn't necessarily out of malevolent intent. Sometimes sellers just aren't aware of what is important to you. So the onus is on you to ask the very specific and detailed questions that you need to be able to make an informed decision. And these can be everything from particular obstacles that the horse is or isn't comfortable with, experiences that the horse has or hasn't had, health history questions, how that horse gets along with other horses, has this horse ever reared, kicked, bitten, been lame, colic, does this horse ride alone, is this horse barn or buddy sour. If you're interested in more specific criteria that I personally would be shopping for in a trail horse, you can watch this video right here to get a feel of some questions that you could ask. Don't purchase from a seller who doesn't ask you any questions either. You know, I want to know that the seller is invested in this horse and wants this horse to go to a good home. And good sellers will ask questions of the buyers. What kind of situation is this horse going to? How much time do you have to devote to this horse? Do you have the riding ability to ride this particular horse? Um, are you working with a trainer? What's your experience? There's a lot of great questions that I think solid sellers will be asking a buyer and I definitely want to purchase 
from a seller that is going to ask me questions as opposed to a seller whose only question is, are you paying cash? Some sellers will even ask for a first right of refusal in the horse's contract. They care so much about that horse going and staying in a good home that if for any reason you aren't able to keep him anymore, they wanna be able to buy that horse back to make sure that that horse stays in a solid environment. And ultimately, don't settle for a horse that you're not truly excited about. Horses take a lot of time, a lot of money. They are wonderful companions that live for many years. You wanna make sure that you're investing in a horse that you're really happy to be around. If you're interested in more videos to help you as you're shopping for your first horse, check these out right here.